Hello my friends, this is Jeannie. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. In this video, I am going to continue to work on my envelope albums. If you haven't seen the first video where I started this project, I will throw up a card for that video right here, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so that you can go check it out. So in the first video, I made the covers to my uh, mini, not so mini actually, just my smaller envelope albums. And they've had a day to um, dry. And I have to tell you guys, I am so stoked, super happy with the way this turned out. Let me just remind you what we started with. We started with this napkin and this napkin, right? And this is what we have now. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? This napkin has been transformed into this beautiful cover. There is the holly, uh, the berries in the back, and it has a, I mean, the feel of it is awesome. It looks like a faux type leather, beautifully aged, and I can't even, I'm, I'm, I'm shook <laughs> at the way this turned out. I think I have found my preferred method for transforming napkins into covers because this turned out absolutely gorgeous. So I did make two of them um, and when I turned the camera off, I continued working on the one. So let me quickly show you this one. It is a naked album right now. It doesn't have any embellishments. But I will follow what I did in this album to finish this one because this one far from complete and I thought we would continue to work on this one together but let me show you how this one looks so far. So that's what we have so far and let me see can I find something let me find something I can use as a pocket, as a tuck or a tag. Here is a spot right there for something. As I said, this album right now is naked. I haven't made any of the embellishments for it. But I did want to continue to work on it last night so that I would have a template to follow in finishing the second one. I would have continued to record the process on this one last night, but it was really late and I didn't want to keep anyone up with the um, lights and me talking. The house was just that quiet last night. So I figured, let me finish this one and we can finish this one together. So I love the way this turned out. And in case you are interested, the paper pad that I used to make the mats and pockets for that one is the Tis the Season Collection by Bo Bunny. And I got this at... Tuesday morning a little while ago so I am going to use some of these cutoffs that were left over from the first album I am going to use them to complete the second album let me do a quick flip through of this paper pad it is beautiful single-sided traditional Christmas colors which is what I am going for in these two little albums look at these cut aparts aren't they beautiful so very pretty 
Let's see, I have a couple more pages here. These are all very pretty. So I cut all of these cut aparts. I cut them apart. <laughs> and I will be using them um, throughout my book. And what doesn't get used throughout the book will get used um, when I make the embellishments. So let's grab... I'm going to leave these cutoffs here. This is the finished one. It just feels so nice. <laughs> I should mention that um, a little extra something that I did after I turned the camera off was I went in and rubbed some of this Distress Collage medium in the color vintage. I took some of this, if I can get it open. So this is what it looks like. It doesn't look very nice, but um, the effect is beautiful. What I did was I scooped some of that out onto um, my mat and then used my finger to rub some of that all over the front and back of the cover and I think that helped big time to give it this age vintage look I mean look at the difference from what we started with and how bright it is look how bright that is and then look at the vintage vibe that I got so it's come a long way from this to this. And I'm really happy that I finally discovered a workable process to achieve this. And best of all, I had the camera rolling when I did it. So <laughs> it's my forever reminder and tutorial. So I'm going to set this off to the side and let's work on this book. Um, in addition to the Tis the Season collection, I am also going to be using some Distress inks. I decided to limit myself to two Distress inks. I picked Pine Needle and Firebrick. And these are the regular Distress inks. I am going to be using that. I have my inking or my blending tools here. I have a ruler on standby, pencil on standby, scissors on standby, everything's on standby. So let's get this going. So the first thing we want to do, I'm trying to avoid doing a lot of measuring, but I am going to have to measure the inside cover and that will give me an idea of what the mat size throughout the book will be. So let's get a ruler. <laughs> There's my cuckoo clock. And this is about four by Four and three quarters, I would say. So I'm going to write that down four by four, three quarters. A little note here for me on the side so I don't forget that. And the first thing we are going to do is take the green since I'm going to use that same green paper, let's find it. We're going to use this green paper and make a mat for these two pages right here. And then this one, we will cut down a little bit to create... Yeah, we'll cut it back about that much. I'm just eyeballing it. 
to create a little side pocket to tuck into. So let's do that. I'm going to fold that over. Might as well cut it off now. I could just fold it over and glue it, but I don't want to have a ton of bulk. So we will go with that. And I will cut a notch here, but I will cut the notch after we mat it so that um, we can cut the notch into the pocket and the mat at the same time. So we're going to use this green. And I said it was, what, four by four and three quarters. So... four and three quarters will be about there. And then by four, we need two of those. And if they don't exactly fit, that's okay. We'll trim it until it does fit, right? So, let's see, that's actually pretty good, and that's pretty good too. So let's get some green distressed ink, and This is just purely my aesthetic. You don't need to do this, obviously, but that's what I want to do. We need to, we have that little flap. We can either cut that off or glue it down. I am just going to glue it down. So I'm really happy with the way These are turning out. Um, in terms of what I'm going to do with them, they will be gifts, I think, for Christmas. I just have to decide who I'm going to send them to. And if I change my mind about them, then I don't know. <laughs> I guess either I will put them away for next season or um, maybe just send them off as a rack or do a giveaway. Who knows? I certainly would prefer to give them away or have them be gone <laughs> instead of becoming part of my collection of completed projects that I have done absolutely nothing with. We all have that, right? <laughs> you hold on to them waiting for that occasion to send it off to someone and instead all they do is sit and accumulate dust. So we want to try to avoid that. So either these go out, I think I'm gonna use different glue. I'm going to use 
my Tambo Mana Liquid Aqua Blue. Either these go out. I think that's the only option I'm going to give myself. <laughs> I actually know one person for sure that I am going to um, give one of these to because I think she would genuinely appreciate it. Boy, you can tell my cut on this is far from perfectly squared. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. It's not perfect. I tell you that much. But wow. It definitely is off. Did you see how the top the space across is not even. That's because when I cut the tall album in half, apparently I didn't do a very good job of it. But that's okay. We can disguise that. And it's handmade, so that means it's not perfect. Okay. Panel number two. Let's give that a good press. And then this will go over that way. But I think what we need to do is, I think we need to round these corners. <laughs> this is so far from straight, it won't even round properly, but we're going to, there we go, make this work. Good enough. Okay, so we have to mat this one. And, well, actually, no, we don't have to mat it. What I need to do, because I didn't mat it in the other book, I kept it this really nice craft color. And what I did was, inked it. I could mat it, but it's much easier if I can just find a cut apart that fits in there. And let's see what we can find. We could use Santa. He's a little big. I thought I saw, here we go. We could use the snowman. Oh, he's cute. We can use the snowman. We just need to cut him down because he's a little too big. So I'm just going to mark. Just those points are little references. I definitely want to cut it a tad bit smaller than that. is perfect perfect so we will round these corners This is a great way to use the cut aparts. Yep, that looks cute. Let's go with that.
something like that. I think is good. And now we will put some glue along the top and the bottom. I think when you are gluing flaps shut or creating pockets, you want to use a wet glue as opposed to double-sided tape because double-sided tape is always sticky and when you shove you know what I forgot to do I forgot to do my notch good thing I remember that now <laughs> let's do that around there let's add more glue as I was saying <laughs> What you want to do is use wet glue as opposed to double-sided tape because double-sided tape is always sticky and if you wedge a tag into a pocket you risk wedging that tag between the paper and that double-sided tape and then it gets stuck and it will just chew away at the edge of your tag or get so stuck that you will damage your book trying to pull it out wet glue once it's dry it's dry so you don't have to worry about something getting stuck between the glue and the page now I just added some glue to the top and bottom of this flap and now we have this great little pocket so that page is done the next page we are going to we are going to boy I wonder if I can straighten this out I'm going to try to straighten this out a little bit because it is really <laughs> I am going to let me get it is really crooked and it's only going to become more and more of a problem as I cut more of these mats so let's go ahead and take care of this right now we're going to take care of this right now so I am just going to try to square off or at least make it even because right now it is not yeah definitely not so This is what I mean. Sometimes you just have to MacGyver. So what I'm doing is just using the edge of my metal ruler as a guide and just running several passes of my blade as opposed to try to get it all cut in one shot just nice even pressure doing it little by little you'll get a better result less chance of your hand slipping and you're getting you get a worse cut so there you go. That looks so much better. <laughs> so much better. And now maybe my edges will line up better. I had to do that, guys. Um, little imperfections like that normally wouldn't bug me. But in this case, it was only getting worse as I continued to try to cut the mats because they weren't quite lining up. So let's go ahead, go ahead, touch up some of what we cut a little bit. All right, very good. So that's better. That should make it a li little easier moving forward so we are going to create 
a top loading pocket here. And we are going to use, let's see, we are going to use these two papers and we are going to distress this with the fire brick. So let me go ahead and do that while it is fresh on my mind. Can't tell you how many times. I forget to distress. It's not the end of the world. But it just makes it a little harder to do it later. So while it's fresh in the brain, Let's do it now. And since this is going to be a top loading pocket and it's going to have a notch at the top, I'm going to bring down the distress ink a little further down from the edge than I normally would. And that will make sense in a little bit. So, because it is going to be a top loading pocket, I am going to cut a notch or punch my notch up here. You see, that's why I brought the red down. I could mat behind here but I don't think I'm going to actually you know what I punched that a little too premature what I should have done was mat the whole thing first and then cut it but it still works out <laughs> just an extra step so let me just measure again since I trimmed off a little bit this is still going to be four, but now this is about, I'm going to say four and a half. So I trimmed off about a quarter of an inch when I did that little trim. So let's cut two mats that size. No, we need one. I'm going to do it a little bit. Then it'll be four. So if I measured that correctly, the mat should fit. Did I? Did I? I did. Perfect. Good. All right, so let's cut another mat that same size for the other side of the pocket. I'll cut that. Perfect. Very good, very good, very good. Let's get that red. <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of everything that's on my craft desk right now. It's a little bit messy. So I have this project I'm working on, on my desk. I have a second project on the floor to my left. I think that's the next project I want to start. And then I have yet another project 
that is sitting on my bookshelf to my left that I started last year. Yes, you heard me last year and didn't finish. <laughs> so um, I either finished that one this year, like soon, sometime in December, or I am going to pack it up and give it away to someone else. Maybe I'll do a giveaway here. It is a an altered book, Christmas themed, that I started last year and just didn't finish. I actually, I started two of them last year. I finished one. I didn't finish the second one. So I either finish it this year or, yeah, we give it away. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and glue that on. We give it away. Let someone else finish it. It's, um, right now it's just a naked uh, journal. It's supposed to be a December daily. They There are enough pages in it for it to be a December daily. Um, it's going to be December um, in a couple of days. So I won't be using it as a December daily because it's not going to be, be it's not going to be finished. Uh, in time so if I finish it it will be for next year and if I don't finish it and decide to do a giveaway with it then the person who gets it can also use it as a December daily but um, it'll probably be for next year I would imagine right because as I said it's here December is here so it's one of those projects where we are either going to finish it or send it off okay so wish me luck <laughs> okay we are going to put this here so it's interesting because I think what I want to do and I know this is going to look a little weird um, but I think I want to cut this flap down just a little bit because it's not quite matching up. There we go. It's not quite matching up with the edge. There we go, much better. The top edge of the page. Um, using envelopes and cutting it the way I did, cutting it in half, there is going to be some inconsistency on the dimension of each of the pages. That's just the nature of the project. I'm okay with that. The end result is that you are going to have to tweak measurements here and there, tweak some pages here and there by trimming off little bits and pieces here and there to get it to look There we go. Get it to look <laughs> a lot more uniform than what it really is. So the first thing I'm going to do is adhere this flap. I'm going to adhere the flap onto this paper. Let's make sure it's facing the right way. Bells have to be facing the right way. There we go. So as I said, my friends, this is all very, I think, intuitive. You just basically, you start off with your base and you go from there. And it has to be, you see, by adhering that flap onto this page. Now all I have to do is put some glue along here and here. Seal that up and I'll have my top loading pocket. Let me go ahead and punch that notch again at the top.
And don't get me wrong, I'm all about measuring and measurements, and I'm all about having very precise tutorials. I have done them, I love doing them, but sometimes you just want to go for it and just do it and not be so intimidated by measurements and having everything be exact. In a lot of ways, that's very freeing. I suppose it also can be very frustrating <laughs> if things don't look exactly the way you had planned or hoped or envisioned, but there we go. Yay. <laughs> okay. So we have the first set of pages. Here's the second. We have that top here. Now we have it up here. So it is a top loading pocket. So that turned out really pretty. Let's turn over. Next page. Oh, I didn't put red. How did I not do that? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> well, maybe I did and just not enough, but that's okay. Fixed. Okay. So then the next set of pages, this one we're going to create kind of like a angled pocket here. So the way we're going to create the angled pocket here is just fold this in half. And now we have that. Boy, this is going to be fun to make a mat for. That is so... <laughs> such an oddly shaped pocket we will definitely have to MacGyver that one my friends so I could cut off this fold over just to avoid adding bulk to the album but this flap is very thin so instead I'm just going to fold it and glue it down and create some more thickness for this uh, what will be soon, soon to be pocket. And let's see what else we have to glue this down. Little bits and pieces everywhere. So I think envelopes are, are there something that we all have plenty of in our craft room, right? So I think it's so fun to figure out different ways to use the envelopes other than their traditional uses. Um, some non-traditional uses that I like um, for my envelopes are of course the envelope albums and journals. Also, not that it's not traditional, but it's something other than um, using them to mail things. I also use them in my junk journals. I use them in my junk journals. Just taking a drink from my pretty little cup. Don't tell anyone. The cup has some sangria in it. <laughs> and a lot of ice. But as I was saying, I like to use them in my journals. And then there was one project. Oh boy, I can't pull it out right now because it's in, um, it'll take me a few minutes to pull it out. But I will show you how I made a stack of letters uh, with a hinge top in a hidden compartment. It looks like a stack of letters, but if it has a hidden compartment in it, I'll show you that in um, one of my future videos. And actually, I think I made that as part of a hop, a shabby chic hop, shabby chic hop that I did long, long time ago. And I will find that video and throw up a card right there so that you can check it out. But that's another way to use um, envelopes. So I'm sure there's so many others. So, so, so many others. So um, 
how do you use your envelopes if you use them at all it's not for everybody but it's for me so I think we're going to use this paper to mat and we'll use this paper for the pocket so let's go ahead I'm assuming I'm going to go with the same measurements I had for the last mats. If it's a little off, it's a little off. <laughs> C'est la vie. And it was by four. So there's one. Is two. Let's see. Nope. That worked out. Perfect. And I think we will use, what did we use in the last one? Red. We will use green. Distressing. Let's use green. This time around. It's not like a traditional Christmas green, I'll tell you that much. This um, pine needle green definitely has a more, kind of has like a bluish, I don't know, undertone to it, which makes sense to me. Um, it makes sense, especially when you think about pine trees and pine needles. They're not exactly like a traditional Christmas green. I guess it depends on the type of pine that you have. But I like it. It works. I'm I'm going with it. <laughs> I'm not going to change anything. Let's so let's see. This would line up Oh. Oh, 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 here we go. This way. That's what's throwing me. There we go. So let's glue that down. Mm. See? Almost forgot. Let's ink those edges. Were you paying attention? Were you yelling at me? Jeannie, don't forget the edges. You're forgetting the edges. Come on, guys. You got to keep me on my toes here. It's a little messy right now, but it will get better once the mats are on. Let's go ahead and mat these. Now, let's glue on the mat. So I think in this video, I'm going to try to finish all of the pages. And then in the next video, maybe we will make some tags and embellishments for the albums.
Okay, so there is the mat. Now we have to do this. We do know that it is going to be the same height as the rest of the album. So that puts it at four and a half. So let's cut off four and a half. And we know it's going to be just shy of the width of the whole panel. So let's try around three and a half. Eyeballing it, my friends. Something like that. That's my best guesstimate. And I think that's a pretty good guess. Because I think that will definitely cover. Good, good, good. Now let's mark where we are going to cut. In this mess somewhere is a pencil. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Oh, here it is. Let's mark. Around there, and we are going to cut that line on the inside. May not be perfect, but it will be close. That is actually pretty good. Maybe trim off a little bit more. A tad bit more. Just a tiny bit more. Perfect. And what we can do because I don't like how the bottom edge here is not matching up. What we can do is trim off a little bit of that. And now we have a match. We will glue this down and then round the corner. Let's ink this up. And a lot of the reason, a big part of the reason why I ink the edges of my cardstock is the, that so that you won't see that raw edge that white I think by covering that up your project just looks that much more finished it looks a little cleaner you don't have those harsh white lines to distract it looks just a little bit to me a little more put together so that's a big part of the reason why I do it and also, I just like the aesthetic of it. Aesthetically, it's nice. I like it. <laughs> so, that's why I do it.
Not bad. So right now we are just gluing the mat. There we go. We can take trim this a little bit more. Oh, I'm doing red. Ah, I should have been doing green. That's okay. No harm, no foul. Should have been green. There we go. So now all we have to do is add a little bit of glue at the bottom here, and that will be that for that pocket. And just like that we have finished that so we have quite a few more pockets my friends and I think we're pushing close to an hour on this video so I am going to pause here and um, film a third video so be on the lookout for that one where I will continue this process. Thank you for dropping in my friends. I truly do appreciate it. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be awesome. If you are not subscribed, definitely subscribe. I would love to have you and I will catch you all in the next video. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.